We're talking today with Edward Renzi of Woodsfield, Ohio, and the interviewer is James Smither of the Grand Valley State University Veterans History Project. Okay, start off with some background on yourself, and to begin with, where and when were you born? I was born in, <coughs> pardon me, I was born De December the 7th, 1925, in a small town c called Parlette, Ohio. Okay, now did you grow up there or did you move around? No, in fact, uh, my, uh, my mother came to her mother's house to, to, to have me, mm -hmm. you know. And after about six weeks, we moved to a small town called Wintersville, Ohio. So actually, you might as well say, I was born, raised in Wintersville, Ohio. All right. And what was your family doing for a living? My dad was a, a coal miner. And also, he was on a, 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 a rail uh, force for a while, railroad. Mm -hmm. Basically, he was a miner, coal miner. Okay. So, what part of Ohio were you in? It was the uh, eastern part of Ohio. Yeah. Okay. Jefferson County. All right. Now, did your father have steady work during the Depression, or was that on and no, off? No, the Depression was rather tough, you know. It was really something that uh, we survived. But that's about it. Okay. And how many kids were in the family? Uh, just uh, another brother. All right. Uh, and then, um, do you remember how you heard about Pearl Harbor? Yes, I do. I vividly. I was 16 years old, and my uncle and dad and cousin, we always went fishing for walleye. And, and it was, even though that it was that time of the year was still good fishing for walleye. Mm -hmm. Okay, we were fishing and we broke camp. We had a cabin and we broke camp and we was going home. And then we heard over the radio that the, the Japs attacked it. And my dad and my uncle were, were, were they just said, oh, they just said, oh, well, that won't last long. And my cousin, he was four years older than I was. And mm -hmm. they said, that, well, maybe Jim will go, go to the service. But Ed, he won't have to go, that's for sure. And uh, they just took it as a grain of salt, like most of us. They thought the Japs would be a pushover, you know. Mm -hmm. And they would even joke about, say, if we see any Japs, don't forget, we'll run over them, you know. They were really joking about it. Mm -hmm. It was really serious. You know? All right. Uh, now, did life change at all after the war started? Uh, because it's going to be a while before you go in the service yourself. Um, yes. So, so what what changes were there in your community or your area? Well, I just m most things was the regulations. You know, for, naturally since the war, they got restrictions and stuff like that. You know, but other than that, it would just just seemed like it what whatever it would would be. You know. Okay. Uh, now, did you decide to, uh, did you consider enlisting or did you just wait until Uncle Sam called you? Well, I wanted to enlist right away, you know, but my dad and uncle, though, they just told me to, be, you know, get on me, <laughs> tell me, you know. Mm -hmm. In fact, when, after I did sign up for, and I was, uh, I'd always want, they didn't call me, see, I was born in December, mm -hmm. okay, so that was the latter part. So I, I, the, the draft board didn't hear any notice from me, you know, and I kept telling them, I, maybe I ought to go up there and check on it. They're not calling me yet. And mm -hmm. boy, they'd get on me, they'd give me hell. They'd say, you just sit tight, they'll mm -hmm. call you. So finally, they finally did call me. So when did you get your draft notice? Well, really, I, I can't tell you mm -hmm. know, when I got my draft notice, for sure, you know. But I can tell you when I went, when I was, 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 when I was caught. Called, what, called up. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was uh, March of 14th, 1944. Okay. Okay. So at that point now, let's see, were you 19 then? Mm, or still 8? Or still, no, you're, let's see. Eight, no, let's do that. You're still 18. You're yeah, still 18. You're still 18. Right. That's yeah, right. Yeah. Right. Because it would be December of 43, that you turn 18. Yeah. yeah. That following, yeah. Right. 18. Okay. So you're still 18. Okay. So you didn't really have to wait too long after your your 18th birthday. No, so they, not really, yeah. They caught up with you pretty yeah, quickly. Yeah. Okay, now, uh, where did you report to first? Well, our first report was a small town, Caddis, Ohio, mm -hmm. and we, they took us to Cleveland for, uh, you know, for our introduction. Yeah. Okay, now, did you, how did you wind up uh, 
in the service branch that you joined? And I guess which, which branch of the service did you enter? The Navy. Okay. I was in the Navy. But it was, I had a, it was, it was considered a selected volunteer, selected volunteer. I have a choice. Okay. So I picked the Navy. Okay. Now, why did you pick the Navy? Well, I just uh, thought it'd be better. And, and my dad and uncle, I, they, they were like my tutors, you know, mm -hmm. and they, they more or less said that maybe because my uncle, my the uncle I'm telling you about, mm -hmm. he was in World War One, mm -hmm. and so he probably knew what it was like to be underground, you know. So, so I thought you might pick him. Okay, all right. So you, you sign up for the Navy, and then where do they send you for training? Uh, Great Lakes uh, Naval Training Station, Chicago. Okay, all right. And um, how did you get there? Uh, by bus. Because you took a bus from Cleveland to Chicago, yeah, or yeah, okay. So you didn't take a train to Chicago and then uh, a bus, or yeah, okay, all right. Uh, and describe what basic training was like. Boy, it was something different. I'll tell you that. <laughs> Little country boy, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, all at once you're here with a group of group of fellows all at once. You know, close quarters. You know. And uh, but I, I I fell in with it, you know. I you know I thought I'd do, it would really affect me, but I, mm -hmm. I don't know. I just I did what I had to do, you know. Okay. And what what kind of stuff did you do in training? Well, we'd have a lot of physical running and, and uh, calisthenics and and things like that. Okay. Now it's the Navy, so did you have to? Uh, learn how to tie knots or that kind yeah, of thing? Yeah, we had not too much of that. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Now we had uh, recognition, you know, of, of uh, enemy ships, aircraft, things like that, visual training. Okay. Now did they do a firefighting drill? Yeah, we had that. Went to, in fact, we went to firefighting school. Okay. Yeah. And what did that consist of? Well, that was something. We went to actual happenings, you know, we was in gear and and we had uh, nozzles and everything, and they had fires that like we we uh, had this spray in front of us mm -hmm. and actual actual fire training. Okay, uh, and let's see, did they have you try gas masks or breathing equipment? Yeah, we had that too. Yeah. Okay, uh, and how did the drill instructors treat you? This it was discipline, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but were they? I mean. They weren't, they weren't mean, no. Okay. So they, they, they did things for a reason? Right. Okay. All right. And how long did uh, basic training last? From March until... Damn, there we go. Let's see. Well, did you... See, we went in... Uh, okay, after a basic, mm -hmm. we got on a troop train and... Uh, it was about six weeks, well, about it was. Okay. okay. So okay, after our, our basic, we got on a troop train, and uh, we went to California, called uh, uh, Camp Shoemaker. Mm -hmm. It was a uh, an embarkation point where we were, where they where they gathered, and then when it was ready to ship, when they need people, they draw from there. So right. we were there for, oh, I bet you, oh over a month and a half. Mm -hmm. and that was really good duty then. We had it made, nothing to do really, you know, so we'd go to Frisco, San Jose, and uh, you know, we had a good time, you know. Okay, and, and how were you able to travel around? Did they run buses from the yeah, camp? Yeah, bus, buses, yeah. Okay, all right, uh, and, but, but you didn't really have to do, did you have any work to do? Did you ever get KP or clean no, up the I place? I think what I did, yeah, we had to take care of barracks like that. And I think I worked in a post office for a while. And uh, and also, uh, that, like I said, we used to have for about six weeks or maybe more than that. We even went to Oakland and tried to get a job. <laughs> you know, just get some extra spending money. Right, okay. You know, that was great. All right, so, by the, so, so when then do you actually ship out? Hmm. That's in June? Yeah. It, yeah, it had to be June, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, and what kind of ship do you go on? It was a troop transport, but I can't tell you the name of it now. Mm -hmm. Do you have an idea of how many men were on it? Oh, there was uh, 
had to be twelve or fourteen hundred at least. Okay. Now, was this like a, a, a liberty ship or a victory ship, or was it bigger than that? It uh, it might have been called a U, U, U.S. Scott. Okay. But I wouldn't say that right or not, but All something right. like that. Okay. It uh, was a big one, yeah. Okay. Now, uh, and then when you left San Francisco, um, did people get seasick? Oh, boy. That was a, one of the bad features. I'll tell you, that was... Just, that wasn't a very good experience on that troop ship, you know, just like fly, packed like, you know. Mm -hmm. And boy, you, you get up there in the mor morning, go there, uh, you, the first thing you want to do is get the hell up on the top deck, because mm -hmm. boy, there's, uh, and there's all kind of spray mm -hmm. and everything, you know, from mm -hmm. everybody was, not everyone, but uh, so everyone was really heaving. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right. So did you get seasick? Yes. Okay. A lot of guys say they don't, and I'm never sure I believe them. So, okay, that's one for you. All right. Uh, and did your ship sail with an escort, or were you by yourself? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we had an escort, yeah. Okay. Uh, and then, so when you're, you're, you leave California, what's your next stop? Uh, and we talk, Marshall Islands. Okay. So you don't get to visit Hawaii or anything like oh, that? Oh, no, not in a troop transport like that. We just directly there, yeah. All right. Let's see. Now, when you go out to Anahuitoc, let's see, did you cross the equator or the dateline yet? Well, uh, I don't know if we, w w when we did cross, this same, I mean, is this thing now. I have to look at my book. Well, of course, when you're a troop transport, I don't know if they mark that kind of thing. No, that, no. I think after we got an Anahuitoc, and then we headed to back to uh, the Marshall, I mean, uh, Saipan, the mm -hmm. Marianas. I think that's the time we went through the equator, and then that's when we went through that ceremony. Okay. That was something All right. to tell you, man. All right, okay. <laughs> All right, so it's going to back up. So, base, uh, do you have a sense of how long it took you to get from San Francisco to Anahuitoc? No, I don't. Okay. It's okay. probably in my cruise book. Right. I don't know. Okay. Uh, and what was the weather like once you... And the weather was uh, what must have been normal because, you know, n nothing stood out in my memory about the okay. weather, yeah. All right. Uh, and did people get used to being at sea? So did they stop all getting sick or did well, people... That, that, yeah, but before we got there, it tapered off, yeah. Yeah, okay. All right. And when you get to Anahuitoc, uh do you get to go ashore? Oh, no, 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 no. Okay. Probably not a lot to do there anyway, but... Yeah, right. Okay. So how long do you think you were in port at Anahuitoc? Well, not very long. And then, then we, uh, the, the, when we get on the ship, we, uh, they had just rope ladders, and we had to climb up the rope ladders with our gear, you know, to get on the ship. Okay. So what ship were you assigned to? That's when I got to California. Okay. And describe the California. If someone doesn't know what that was, uh, what kind of ship was it? It's a battleship. And it was uh, 600 and some feet long. Uh, I've got the tonnage and everything. And it had 14-inch four, main battery and 5-inch, 20 millimeters, and 40 millimeter armament. Mm -hmm. So it was uh, heavily armed, you know. All right. And, and, and what kind of history did it have? Well, it's an old, it was an old ship, and it was at Pearl Harbor, December the 7th. Mm -hmm. It was partially sunk. Right. And it was brought up and taken back to Bremerton, Washington, and retreated, and uh, that was it. Okay. All right. And so you're now joining the ship's complement. Yes. Uh, okay. And when you join the California, what is your job when you get there? Well, uh, at first, uh, uh, cleaning compartments, you know, our division, Division A, we were assigned mm -hmm. to our division, and cleaning com uh, compartments for a while, you know, mm -hmm. and I can't tell you how long before I was assigned to the uh, 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 air compressors. wasn't very long. Okay. One, one of the uh, uh, other uh, uh, fellows was there before, you know, petty officers, mm -hmm. would take me under his wing and teach me that. Okay, so when you came on there, because you didn't have any specialized training at all. Oh, no. You no. were just an ordinary seaman. Oh, a little kid, yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, now, 
What proportion of the crew do you think were new guys? Were there a lot of young guys there? Mm. That's a good question. No, I'd say that ba ba basically that we were just replacements, you know, okay. and I'd say we was, was a small percentage at okay. that time. So a lot of the crewmen had been with the ship for a while. Oh, yes, yes, definitely, yeah. All right. Okay. Uh, so you join the ship and then you, you head out to sea, uh, and where are you going? To, uh, the, when you leave and we talk. Yeah. Well, the Saipan. Yeah, okay. So you're finishing up Saipan. Right. So you're going yeah. up to the Marianas. So yeah. this is the point then when you cross the equator and you have the ceremony? It had to be before that, between and we talk and gone to go back to Marianas. Right, right. I have to look it up. It yeah. Definitely. Okay. Yeah, that, that was quite a thing, you know, you become a show back then. Well, you take a beating then, too, I'll tell you. That is some ceremony, I'll tell you. And then we crossed the equator more than once. Mm -hmm. The second time, we were shellbacks, you know. Mm -hmm. We were cocky. We were, we, we, you know, that you could you could even come to an officer then, like me being a, a fireman first, sec, second class now, mm -hmm. and, make, and make him do simple things, you know. Well, that was something. <laughs> okay. So it's kind of like a giant fraternity hazing? Oh, yeah. But really hazing. And I to forget one time, this uh, this officer, uh, he was really cocky, you know, he was, didn't want to go through it, you know, he tried to he stop, you know, going through it. They had a gauntlet, a bunch of seamen like that, and they had uh, uh, canvas bags soaked with, you know, there'd be soaked with water, and you'd run through that, and you better run damn fast, because they'd beat the hell out of you. And this guy tried to fight it, and this officer, they got him down, they beat the hell out of him. Boy, and everybody was just clapping because he was trying to be, you know, be a big time officer. Mm -hmm. But they had to go through it too. And you had to crawl through a sleeve, a big canvas sleeve, and they had a fire hose. When you come out, it hit you, and they, and they had all kind of stuff in there, like, oh, the gooey stuff. Mm -hmm. You had to crawl through there, and as soon as you come out, out that hit you with a fire hose and knock you right down. Yeah, it, was, it was quite a ceremony. Right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so you, you survive all that. Yeah. Okay. Now, you, so when you got to the Marianas, uh, did the ship uh, go, did the ship do any firing there? Oh well, yeah, that's what it was. We was uh, engaged. Uh, 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 let's see. We were shelling. Uh, at first, it was it was Saipan mm -hmm. and Tinian. And then go on. Mm -hmm. And what we just saw from the beach at that what uh, that's our that's a battleship's main objective. Right. You know, to, to shell the beachhead, you know, mm -hmm. and and, you know, and and one time we hit a sugar sugar refinery and uh, and uh, one time we hit an ammunition dump even, mm -hmm. you know, that was our idea. To make it a little easier for the Marines when they landed, you know. Right. You know, Okay, and the fighting on Saipan went on for a while. I mean, Guam and, and Tinian were pretty quick. Yeah. Right. So, did you do any ground support? Did you do any supporting fire after the Marines landed on Saipan, or were you pretty much done no, after the landing? Much, just more or less, just you know, just cruising, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, when you were in the Marianas, did you see any Japanese aircraft? You know. I don't think we did. We had a couple of bogeys. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I remember that first, well, about one of the first, uh, say the first month I was there, we had a couple at uh, well, bogeys uh, when was, when something reported unknown, and you know, and they go to battle stations, mm -hmm. you know. And I remember the first bogey. I just got hair stood up on my, you know, because I had a battle station, and mm -hmm. you know, and I kept wondering, you know, you know a little, a little, little. little Concerned, you know. Okay. So a bogey being enemy aircraft? Yeah. Or at least an unknown yeah. aircraft? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Now, where was your battle station? Uh, I was in, uh, did they have that, like a 20 millimeter group, that's where 20 millimeter guns are. Mm -hmm. And right offside, they got like a, a little compartment with a with a opening. And my job was to hand out the, the magazines mm -hmm. when they needed them. Right. Okay, so you're basically you're kind of you're, you're, you're not quite a loader, but you were moving the ammunition, yeah, you're giving yeah, the ammunition to the yeah, loaders. Right. Yeah. 
Okay. But I've never had to do it. You know. All right. Okay. So, uh, so that's kind of your your introduction. Now, um, how much noise do the battleship guns make? How much what? How much noise do the big guns make? You'll never believe it. You better have cotton. We had cotton and earplugs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now nowadays they got modern. They got those. You yeah. know. But we just boy, they, boy, it is something. And the whole damn ship. You know, when it was main battery ship, fourteen inches. Mm -hmm. that, yeah, the, the whole ship rocks. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, I think after the war, a lot of the gunners had hearing problems. I mean, oh, oh yeah, I'll yeah. bet. I'll bet a lot of them did. Yeah. I'm not kidding. Okay. Uh, so after the Marianas, uh, do you go back to the Marshalls, or wh what do you do after Saipan? Uh, let's see. No. Yeah, we were around the Philippines then, I guess. Yeah, well, the Philippines, that, that starts, uh, I think, in October. So you go... see September. Now, there's I've a, there's a point in, oh. the, in the ship's history where you had a... The California had a collision with the Tennessee. Oh, yeah, that's it. We had it. That was... Uh, and in fact, I was on watch that night with... Uh, I had the phones on, you know, and then ma main control said... You know, they, they've told us that we're having trouble. The Tennessee is steer, having steering problems. Stand by, you know. And pretty soon they, they, they said, stand by for crash. And I yelled it, you know, so everybody would be up. Because a lot of times, you know, those guys, even over in, in the gun mounts mm -hmm. like that, guys are laying down, you know, mm -hmm. at night time. And so everybody jumped up and kept ready, and they hit us, you know. And it tore a big hole on our starboard side. I think a starboard side. Mm -hmm. Tore a big hole there, and it cooled several boys up there too. Just ripped a big hole in there. All right. And then, how much of a shock was it? You're standing at your station. Did you get knocked over? Or did you hang on? It was a wasn't really abrupt. It was real, just solid like oh. that. You know, boom, boom, like that. You know, it wasn't like a. Okay, so it was kind of gr almost, almost grinding into the hole yeah. rather than yeah, a big you, crash. Yeah, you could hear it, kind of, yeah. Okay. Uh, so after the collision. Uh, where did you go? Where did you go to get the ship fixed? Oh yeah, after after that we went to a place called uh, yeah, Espirito Santos, mm -hmm. New Hebrides Islands. Right. They had a floating dry dock there, a little one, you know, mm -hmm. and so they patched us up there. All right, uh, and then while you were in the New Hebrides, did they let you go ashore there? Yeah, oh yeah, they had a uh, place they called a pet I don't know. I forget what it was. Anyhow, we we had nice there. We could go short, have beer, throw football, mm -hmm. play softball. So we there. I, I can't tell you how long. I can't remember. But to, so we enjoyed ourselves there. So after. Yeah. Okay. So you, you get a little bit of a break, and yeah. but then and then and then your next combat mission then is going to be for the invasion of the Philippines. Philippines. That's that's where it does. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, when you leave um, the New Hebrides, uh, where do you go to join the fleet, or do you meet them just approaching the Philippines? Hmm. I mean, did you go to the Marshalls or Palau or any of those places, or I think it's Palau. I yeah. think. Yeah, because we use that as a launching yeah, pad. Yeah, that's where we got this. Uh, uh, yeah, I think that's what. And then the Philippines, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, now, at this time, um, have you changed? Has your job on the ship changed? Because you initially um, you're up there and you're you're helping the the gunners. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. That yeah. No, no. I'm back in uh, the compressors. Yeah. We were with the compressors. Yeah. Okay. So describe a little bit what your regular job was. And and doing doing uh, uh, battle and stuff like that, uh, we're we're there with the compressors, you know. And one time, uh, to show you how much that uh, main battery shoots you like at mm -hmm. compression, we had a leak, and boy, on our compressors, you know, we had water lines and stuff, and boy, that was hectic. Everybody's running around. We finally had wrenches and stuff, and we finally got it stopped, you know. Mm -hmm. All right. So that little exciting there. Okay. That's now, fine. now, what were the compressors for? Well, uh, uh, the low, low press, 
low pressure compressor. It was just for general usage around the ship, just where we need low air, like, like air tools and stuff like mm -hmm. that. Okay, so just for power uh, tools. Uh, intermediate, it would be for heavier equipment, stuff like that. But the uh, high compressor, uh, high pressure compressors, mm -hmm. they would when the main battery would shoot shoot you, that would they they had to blow all that gas and stuff out like that. And they okay. had, had to be damn sure all that was out of because if they'd go and try to reload, put a powder keg in there mm -hmm. when it was heat, it'd be a misfire. Okay. Damage. So that was had to blow that out. That was, Okay, so it, you're doing ventilation and you're providing power for yeah. air compressor tools and a lot of different things, yeah. but you need to gen push a lot of air. Right. <laughs> okay, so, and, and with a ship that big in particular, that would be a lot. Okay, uh, and then, so was your job, what, what were you actually doing? When you're on watch with the compressors, are you just looking at dials and... Yeah, right. Yeah, you had to have gauges and yeah. make sure that everything was okay, you know, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then and then you had your stays and naturally you, you had to keep it spotless, you know. Okay. That wasn't too bad during, uh, uh, during the, the action, you know, because regulation was secondary then, mm -hmm. you know. All right. Uh, now, your ship gets involved in some serious fighting in the Philippines. Yeah. Uh, there's a battle in the area called the Surigao Strait. Straits, yeah. Okay. Now, what do you remember about that? Oh, boy, I remember. Uh, before it happened, uh, the chaplain got on the ship and, and told us about it. He said, he, he said we're going to have the en engagement here, he said. And he, he actually said, it's, it's in the book, mm -hmm. he said, uh, make sure you're, you're clean. You have a shower and have clean, uh, clean clothes on because it could be infected. You know, mm -hmm. he said that, you know, really. So that, you'd probably logic to that, you know, really. So anyhow, we got thinking, boy, and got think, damn, seeing gave me, you know, made you think. Mm -hmm. A little scary for a while. All right. Uh, and then when the battle happens, um, what was your experience of it? Are you just down in the hole? Yeah, I was, uh, and, and uh, then I was, the, I was with the hot. Were you with the high power compressors or the? <clears throat> I, I was with the uh, high pressure uh, compressors mm -hmm. then, you know, and uh, and I. Uh, so I was way down in the hole, way down, mm -hmm. way down, way back. So, so I couldn't hear much or see much, you know. Mm -hmm. Thankful, you know. So I was glad it was all over. Do you have an idea of how long the battle actually lasted? You know what? Uh, no, I don't think it lasted that long. Probably maybe. not. I kept thinking, boy, oh boy, what the hell are these lines break? <laughs> mm -hmm. So at that point, you're just doing your job. Now, could you feel sort of the rumblings at all, the guns firing? Did you get some vibration? Yeah, there's some vibration even down there, yeah, yeah. But not, not like it would be if you up a top. Right, right. Okay, so what did they tell you about the battle afterward? Well, after it was over, they called PA system, said, uh, secure, battle, battle station secure, you know. You need to relax, and you know. And then, at what point do you find out what actually happened? Well, we didn't know what, what we are that we would, you know, we did get a credit for. Uh, 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 I think it was a cruiser. Cruiser, an old battleship, because the Japanese had a bunch of old battleships yeah, there, yeah. and cruisers. So you you think you sank something? Yeah, we got scoreboard for something, anyhow. right? Yeah. yeah. And we see we were the old old type too, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, the other type, the uh, uh, well, the Iowa class. Yeah, the Iowa class. That, that they were they were new, mm -hmm. but uh, we did our part. Right. Okay. Now, after that battle, did you go up to Lady Gulf, or did you go up to the area where the landings were? Yeah, we had to. Yeah, yeah. right. 
Yeah, because there's pictures of that, I think, in, 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 the, in the ship's book. But by then, the landing has already taken place, and the battle was already fought there. Because that was the area where the destroyer escorts and things were fighting the big Japanese ships. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And then. Okay. And yeah, then, we, no, we, we, uh, And that was going on while you were having your battle. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. Uh, and so you so so this is now October of forty four. Uh, do you just stay in the Philippines area, or do you go away and come back? Because you're engaged with Lingan Gulf, and that's January. Yeah, January. Yeah. yeah. In, in, in so I remember that. Yeah. So November, December. Hmm. You remember where you had Christmas, 1944? Yeah, you know, I think that's where we were. We were in a, in a Philippine area, mm -hmm. but we wasn't any action there right. to speak of. You know. Right. I remember we had a good Christmas and a good, a real good meal. Mm -hmm. No interruption then. So I, that must have been that the way until, you know, we got in Lingayan Gulf. That was January. Yeah, okay. Uh, let, let's talk a little bit about life on the ship. Um, what was your daily schedule like? Well, we'd go to our stations, of course, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we always had to, you know, there's always things to do, shine up and stuff. And the main thing is to make sure everything's operating. That was right. the biggest thing, just like a watch, you know, it's like a watch. Okay. You know? Well, how long would the watch be when you're on duty? Four hours. Okay, so you have four hours on. Yeah. And then, and then maybe eight hours off. You know, and then you then you stagger. Sometimes you get to four. To, well, we had different uh, time mm -hmm. points then. You know, uh, you know, different ones. Twelve to four, four to eight, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And then also after a while too, uh, we'd uh, every once in a while we'd have to clean the compartment. You know, like well, I was, was farming second, and mm -hmm. we'd have to clean the compartment for a while, take turns, you know, right. swab it and everything, you know. So okay. we worked. All right. Now, did you have your own bunk, or did you have to share? No, we had our own bunks. They were, you know, tiered, you know, like, you know, like three bunks, you know, like here, here, and here, okay. you know. And then they folded up during the day, you folded up, and had your flash covers over it, you know. Mm -hmm. and then and it, and then it had passageway. Mm-hmm. All right. And how much uh, headroom did you have? How much space was there? Not too much. <laughs> you know, when you're at the bottom bunk a couple of times, and uh, you, you go by like this, you'd hit the top, you know, wasn't mm -hmm. too much, you know. All right. Uh, and, and how do they feed you? How what? How do they feed you? What was the food like, and how did you get it? Oh, I, I never complained about food too much, you know. But uh, a lot of them did, you know. But, uh, yeah. Baked beans sometimes, but our food, uh, that's one thing. We always had food, and that's what was in the engagements, you know, mm -hmm. and, then, and then we would have whatever we had after that, you know. Mm -hmm. But uh, no, we, I wouldn't complain about the food. Okay, but you had your own cooks and. Oh, yeah. And that kind of thing. Oh, and have chow lines, you know, you go line up for chow line, you try to get up there as quick as you could. Mm -hmm. If you didn't, your chow line would be from here to. But maybe a couple, a couple hundred feet long or so. Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, how many men were, were in the ship's complement? Uh, 1,200, I think. Okay. Yeah, 1,200. All right. Uh, so that if you're in the wrong part of the line, that can be bad, yeah. even if you're eating in ships. Yeah. Okay. And I forget how many officers there were, you know. Okay. All right. Uh, so. And then, did you have, I mean, did they show movies on the ship or have other oh, entertainment? Yeah. And when we were out of the battle zone, oh yeah, they uh, uh, would have, call, they called them smokers, you know, and uh, then they even had movies certain times. And they had boxing matches sometimes. Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, one, one, one of the uh, chief petty officers in our, in our division wanted to train me to, to box. Mm -hmm. so I backed out. Yeah, that'd be a good idea. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, yeah. So, uh, and then, uh, I guess, how many men would sleep in the same compartment? Good question. Hmm. Well, 
I'd say the whole uh, whole division would be. Okay, so yeah. that's like forty yeah. guys, fifty guys. See, our A division wasn't that big. You saw the picture. Yeah, you know? that's true. Yeah. Okay. All right, and of course, we would sleep at different times, right? Because you all, some of you are on watch, and some yeah. of you aren't. Yeah. Yeah. So not too bad. Okay. All right. So. And so you have a relatively routine life there for a while after the lady battles, um, and then basically describe what happens at Lingan Gulf. Lingan Gulf. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we were there, and uh, I think it was January the sixth. I, I looked at the mm -hmm. book before. I think it was January the sixth, and that's when. That's when that can't, uh, can't suicide plane hit us. Mm -hmm. And what part of the ship did it hit? It happened up in the upper superstructure around the, one of the uh, upper c control towers. Mm -hmm. And it was really something. And that was close to your old battle station? Well, yeah. I mean, you know, when it hit like that, all the gas and flame and everything, all the stuff would come down that way, you know. It, it, it was a lot higher where it hit, mm -hmm. you know. I okay. was like here and it was like up here, more than superstructure right. where, where he hit. And what happened to the man who replaced you? Well, he was burnt real bad. I mean, he didn't die, but he mm -hmm. was burnt real bad. Okay. Uh, well, maybe, may, maybe, I, maybe I wouldn't have been there. Maybe he, he was sticking out or something. I don't yeah. know. But, uh, anyhow, I, I've been the same station. Okay. Now, when it hit, uh, you were down below, right? When the kamikaze hit, you were down at your duty station? Yeah, I was in, in my uh, clip room. Okay. All right. And then, did you feel or hear anything when it hit? Oh, no. I think I... Oh, when it hit, what world was... When it hit, yeah. 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 Uh, no, I just... It, it was, you could tell something happened, you know, mm -hmm. like that. and then, and then, and then the, the, the information center put out, you know, we were hit, you know, and then you could hear stuff going back and forth, you know, but you could, you know. But, uh, yeah. Now, was the damage just to that one part of the ship where it hit? So it, you didn't have big fires or? Oh, yeah. Or mammoth fires, you okay. know, that stuff, you know. Oh, so many guys got burnt, God. You see those guys that you talk about blisters. They had mm -hmm. blisters like that. They would burn them. Mm -hmm. burn. See, not laying around. It was after Rupert, of course, you know. Mm -hmm. And boy, this, what a smell. Yeah. Flesh. All right. Uh, and did it take a while to put the fires out? Was there. They, they did a good job. Yeah. Okay. Now, did you just stay at your post the whole time? Oh, yeah. We was under, I was yeah. under deck right. now. Get right. me wrong. I, I yeah. was on top side. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah, I was under. Yeah. 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 We just stayed at our place. Okay. Uh, and then, so afterward now, the plane has been hit. You put the fires out. Uh, now, what does the ship do? Well, I don't know where they went then. You know, I don't know. Probably mm -hmm. had to go out of out Zone someplace, you know. Well, you had to go somewhere to get repairs, right? Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, but, uh, so uh, then that, that, after that, uh, naturally, we uh, after we got squared away, I don't know how long it took, we uh, headed back to uh, the States to get mm -hmm. patched up to Bremerton, Washington. All right. Uh, Washington or, or, or Mare Island? Hmm? Did you go to Washington or to California? No, we went to... Uh, Washington. Okay. Yeah. All right. Washington. All right. And uh, how long did you spend there, do you think? I'll bet you we was there at least two months. Okay. Two and a half months. And now, while you were there, did they let you, did you stay off the ship, or were you still quartered on the ship? No, we were still on the ship. Okay. You know, and the yardbirds, that's what they called the work mm -hmm. of the yardbirds, you know, they'd work, do their work, you know, but we, and uh, now we uh, would get, uh, Go to get liberty, and we'd go to Seattle a lot mm -hmm. of times. You know, we'd get on the ferry from Bremerton and go to Seattle, right. which was 
was a nice, nice city. Okay. Now, how did the people there treat the sailors? The one in Seattle? Yeah. Good. Okay. Good. Uh, how about in Bremerton? Good. Okay. Well, I'll tell you one thing. There was a, there was a restaurant there run by, run by uh, I don't know if they were Jap or, or some kind of Oriental. Probably people, Chinese, uh, but... Uh, uh, Chinese, maybe, okay. And then uh, that uh, he, he had a couple of beautiful daughters, and all those guys could, could try to go there and try to <laughs> pour them. I'll tell you what, they didn't appreciate it or something like mm -hmm. that. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Uh, now, did, did some of the guys get drunk and get in trouble, or? Or you never heard of a sailor get drunk, did you? Just once in a while. <laughs> yeah, even little Ed hit hitting it pretty heavy. That's the first time I was around it. The first time I had a beer was when I was in the Navy. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, that was, yeah, that was something. But I never got in any trouble. Okay. All right. Uh, but and then you, you're getting now. Did you think the war might be over before you got back into it? No, I don't think we. No, we just wanted, we was hoping we was hoping it would be. You mm -hmm. know. Yeah. Then you know that's when Iwo Jima was there. Yeah, we missed right. Iwo Jima. Right. Well, that was bad, and after that was over, and then we started feeling a little better. You know, we mm -hmm. thought, you know, in that respect about the war being over. Right. Not about. Yeah. Okay, uh, so um, when did the ship leave Washington then? Was that now in April or? You know, boy. Well, well, you start looking at book. Boy. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. Well, you went to Okinawa, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, from the Bremerton, we uh, went to uh, from Bremerton went to Long Beach, I think Long Beach, California. Okay. Then we had a shakedown cruise, you know, mm -hmm. just to make sure things were okay, you know. Right. And then, then there went back to uh, Okinawa, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, when you got to Okinawa, had the battle already started? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we got there, I'd say, in the latter phase. Of, okay. Yeah, but we were there, you know, you know we we still done some bomb, bombarding and mm -hmm. stuff, but, yeah, we got there. Yeah. All right. Now, did your ship have problems with kamikazes at Okinawa? I mean, did you get attacked by air or? No, not to speak of, no. Okay. But they had a lot of trouble there, a lot of trouble. Mm -hmm. But that was more or less for the, like the, uh, the uh, destroyers and smaller craft, you mm -hmm. know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think they were targeting the transport ships and things like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so now while you're there and you're off Okinawa are you getting any news or any information about what's happening in that battle or do you just do your job and mind your own business yeah from time to time we get reports yeah mm -hmm. yeah in fact they would have a, a, like a, a bulletin at times it went on, on the ship you mm -hmm. know and they would have some uh, write-ups about you know so and so and they would we they would have some uh, uh, right up to about the ETO, you know, so we yeah. know what was going on in the ETO, you know. So right. that was. Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Now, were you still in the States when Germany surrendered? Because that would have been May, early May of 45. May of 45. May of 45. Because you might have made a to Okinawa by then, or you might have still been. May of 45. Hmm. But do you remember hearing about Germany surrendering? Yeah. I know what you mean, yeah. You know, I, I can't tell you. Okay. Hmm. All right. Uh, now, another thing that happened along the way, a little bit before that, President Roosevelt died. Yeah. Do you remember hearing about that? Oh, yeah. That was big. Yeah, that came on the PA system, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So, you're there in the latter part of the Battle for Okinawa, and that's over officially in early June or something like that. Uh, now, did you stay around Okinawa? For the rest of the war, or did you go someplace else? Well, we stayed around there until the uh, until the uh, they occupied Japan. Okay. And then we stayed there, and uh, and we covered the troops for the landing of the troops. You know, they had a big deal there, and that mm -hmm. was big. The flotilla, boy, that was something you know, big. So we uh, uh, covered the troops. Okay. And, and, uh, 
then after that, uh, we would uh, we anchored, of course. After that, you know, mm -hmm. for a while, and then we got uh, got to go ashore. So I got to go ashore twice. Okay, it's in Tokyo and another province in Japan. I got to go. So I was I was really fortunate because uh, you, you, most of them only got to go one time, but this one time this other person didn't want to go, so mm -hmm. I said I'd go, so I went, got to go twice. Okay. So when you went ashore, what did you see? Just just observe, you know. Mm -hmm. What what would tickle me? That's one province I went to. We saw these little kids. They're so cute, you know, running around, and they had like a big bamboo, a big long bamboo stick. And they had tar on it. And they would catch uh, uh, dragonflies with that, that on that, you know. Okay. And they'd get the dragonflies, and they'd tie a thread around them, and they'd go around the dragonfly with the thread. Like that. <laughs> that was clever the way he did it, you know. All right. Uh, how much? How did the Japanese people behave toward you? Well, someone asked me that the other day. Uh, uh, when when we went to Tokyo, we'd walk along, you know. And, you know, we, there, there's still some people in there's little huts and stuff, you know, shacks and stuff. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and some of them, <coughs> a couple of them, I even had a bottle and go like this, was grinning you like that, you know. Mm -hmm. you know? We had strict orders, do not fraternize, do right. not have anything to do with them, don't even talk to them. You know? Okay. But, uh, so we don't know, maybe they were they's grinning, you know, but... Uh, what what were they thinking? You know? mm -hmm. maybe they had, when you take a drink and that would be it. You know. But okay. We well, never did. You all know? right. And how much evidence did you see of the bombing? And oh, it was something. In Tokyo, you know, uh, this, this different sections, you wouldn't see anything but these big safes. So the big, big long safes. You know, mm -hmm. you see see them in different places. That's all you see, and just got burned out. That, that was it. They loaded. Okay. But still, there's places on Ginza Street mm -hmm. where they still had some deep stores open, stuff mm -hmm. like that. There were some sections. Yeah. But basically, the the, the most the parts we've seen, boy, they were really, I mean, it. Of course, they they were noted for that they, they their structures weren't you know they they were not weren't really yeah. What's, well, they were made of wood and paper. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Yeah, so a lot of a lot of that burned, yeah. and there were some areas that we avoided targeting, so they didn't bomb the Imperial Palace, and they mostly yeah. didn't bomb the Ginza, uh, and that kind of thing. Now, when you went into the other province, was that more in the countryside? Yeah, right. Yeah, it was different. Yeah. Okay, and there was less damage there. Right. Yeah, it wasn't too much there. Yeah. Okay. Now, were you allowed to go into any of the stores or restaurants? Oh yeah, and in fact, I bought some things uh, like. Uh, I've got I got a few things from my mom, and I forgot just what I did get. There mm -hmm. wasn't too much, really. Yeah. There was a few things, you know. Okay. Uh, now, when you first got to Japan, were you in Tokyo Bay at the time when they signed the surrender agreements? Oh, no, no. So you came in later? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we left. All right. Uh, okay. Now, to back up a little bit, do you remember hearing about the atomic bomb? Yes. Uh, yeah. And what kind of response was there to that, or did you understand what that meant? Well, really, I don't think it so uh, soaked in right away. You know, we just thought, well, the war's over, you know, boy, boy, you know, we didn't realize with the you know, what it actually, you know. Right. It's, it was sad, really, but it's war. War is yeah. war, you know. But when you first heard about the bomb, did you think that would win the war? Or oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. Now, uh, aside from going to Japan, did you sail any place else in the Far East? Did you go across to China or anywhere well, else? Well, after the war uh, was over, you want to hear about that? Yeah. Well, after the war was over, we uh, <clears throat> was heading back, and then we was we was on a goodwill tour, mm -hmm. which was great. Okay. Now, when we went to the Philippines from the Ngoya Bay, where that area happened. Some of that stuff happened. We stopped and had. Do you have a memorial service? Or? Yeah. Yeah. We couldn't. Yeah. And we. <clears throat> yeah, we, 
we had um, the server services. And then there we went to uh, Singapore and we were there for a couple of days and got ashore, which mm -hmm. was really great. That was beautiful, Singapore. Mm -hmm. And there were people to, <laughs> they, they, you could, they wouldn't pay attention to you. Mm -hmm. Man out the way, boy, they would shun you, boy. <laughs> Anyhow, it was really nice. And then from there we went to uh, Ceylon, which is Sri Lanka now, mm -hmm. you yeah. change. And uh, it was really nice too. And uh, we got to go uh, ashore a couple of times, and, and we went with uh, the British were there, and mm -hmm. they had these what they call their truck lorries, you know, the big big vans, right. you know, big troop trucks. So we got in one of those one day, and they took us inland and and Ceylon to the capital, Candy, you know, mm -hmm. and it was really scenic because it was hilly, you know. And you'd see all kind of elephants and different people and rice paddies. And I did it. it was really something. Mm -hmm. And uh, and after that, we went to Cape Town, South Africa. Beautiful. Boy, that was something. And we got ashore there a couple of times. And we got up on Tabletop Mountain. And you take, especially me, you know, a little kid, you know, and mm -hmm. never left the county hardly, yeah. you know. No. And boy, I tell you, that really impressed me. I uh, really enjoyed that. So we had a wonderful time after the war coming home. Was, and then we landed in Philadelphia. Okay, so you crossed the Atlantic then coming yeah. back. Yeah, actually we, well, how, how you say that? we circumnavigated the, the globe. Yeah. We really did, you know, down around like that. Yeah. And then we were in Philly uh, from December the, when, I think we pulled into the States December the 7th. Mm -hmm. We had planned just so we'd go in December the seventh, you know, mm -hmm. and I we I was we were in Philly from December the seventh until uh, May, May the fifth, nineteen forty six. Okay, and so I had a good time in Philadelphia too. All right, so I was one of the lucky boys. I survived and okay, uh, so, so had some good times. Okay, so the ship was just sitting in the harbor at Philadelphia at that point for all that time. Yeah, and, that, and our job was to put it in mothballs. You know, okay. we had to get down and we'd be worked and we had to get down in the bilges and scrape and put uh, chromate paint and, you know, get it ready for mothballs. And they get it ready for mothballs, they keep it for a couple of years and then they scrap it. Right. <laughs> yeah, because it was an old battleship. Oh, yeah. They should have scrapped it. But I just, well, I, you'd think they'd just say, well, she did a good job, just let her go, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but they put all that expense and everything into it, you know. But yeah. That's why. All right. So that was it. Okay. Now, if you think back uh, over the time you you spent on the ship, um, are there other memories that stand out for you that you haven't talked about yet? Other things that happened or people you knew? Yeah, there's uh, like some of our band members, you know, I, I thought about them, you know, and. Uh, So how much work did the band do? I mean, did they play regularly or? Yeah, they played, yeah. And they'd even go, uh, like like we go, when we would go, they would, like when we went to Esperito Santos, mm -hmm. they, they played there and sometimes, I think they went ashore in the Philippines one time. Mm -hmm. And we went ashore in the Philippines sometime, what they called it, Osmensa Beach, you know, he was a uh, politician or something for mm -hmm. the Philippines, Osmensa. Okay. And they all had all kind of uh, crafts, you know, for us boys to come by, you know. Mm -hmm. Pat, I bought a big old hat one time and bought stuff like that, and you could go and buy, you know, things like that. So, mm -hmm. so we went ashore then. And uh, I was thinking about this one uh, boy, uh, he was uh, a singer in the band, and uh, he, uh, Tell us that he used to go to Linda Darnell. She was a movie star, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. I don't know, maybe it was right or wrong. Right. Maybe he did, because he was from California, mm -hmm. and he was a singer, you know. Mm -hmm. But uh, he was killed. And... Did he? So I thought about that, you know. Cause... Yeah, was was that the time of... And there's a guy called uh, Harry Chin. He was an Indian from mm -hmm. uh, one of the Dakotas, mm -hmm. and uh, he was one of the guys that 
Yeah, on the, on, the, uh, on our Tennessee hit us. He was up there. He got it. Mm -hmm. A lot of different things you can flash it back at you, you know. But. Okay. Now you brought along um, a, a few artifacts here, uh, and maybe you can kind of show them and, and explain what they are. So we'll start with this one. Well, that's a navy blue dress dress hat. You know, okay. it was part of our uniform. You know. Can you hold the it up blues. a little bit higher? Oh. Hold it up a little bit higher, like that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So that's part of the dress uniform. Yeah, so you're not yeah, for the blues. Yeah. Okay. So how often did you wear it? Well, it depends where he was. If he's in what zone he's in. If he's in, it was real hot. We had whites. We used your whites. Mm -hmm. So yeah, have... this was this was a hat. This that's this your... was in you know yeah other times. Okay. But basically, this was most of the time. This would be. You know, like in California or something like mm -hmm. that, you know. All right. Okay. And then here we've got... That's a white, yeah. That's the, not quite as white as it used to be. Uh, <laughs> but all right. So that's sort of the, the shirt part. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then here. Now, do these, is that from the dress uniform? Yeah, this is a dress blues. Okay, a little higher. And, yeah. And see, they had that. There's supposed to be 13 buttons there for the 13 original colonies. Okay, so it's all across the front. Yeah, there. Yeah. There. yeah. All right. Uh, let's see, and then just a blanket here. Yeah, that was a blank, whatever blanket. So it's sort of yeah. standard issue. Yeah. Uh, Navy material. All right, so. See how I'm doing here. Okay, uh, so once you get out, we make it to 46. You're discharged from the Navy. What do you do after that? You just well, go home, or yeah. When I got out in uh, nineteen May fifth, nineteen forty six, uh, I uh, naturally came home. Yeah, you know, and then uh, I didn't uh, do anything for a while, and then I went to uh, Michigan, Detroit, Michigan. You know, in nineteen forty, latter part of forty six, or okay, anyhow. Uh, and I got a job in uh, auto plants, mm -hmm. and I stayed there for a while. And uh, I had this one job in an in, in uh, in assembly line for Dodge Motors, you know, it had been, uh, and, uh, and, they, and they changed models in August, so they laid me off. So mm -hmm. I was there just maybe for three, four months, and I really liked that job. But, but then, when I, mean, I got laid off, I went over to this Ford Motor Company, I can't get a job over there. Mm -hmm. And I stayed there for oh, several months, and then uh, my dad called me and he said he could get me a job in the coal fields. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm a country boy, you know, so okay. I had to come back home. All right. Which I'm better off if I stayed there, really. All right. Well, she's still here. She heard that. <laughs> oh boy. All right. Uh, okay. So uh, anyhow. Now. Uh, I come back and got a job in the coal fields, you know. Now, when you say coal fields, are they doing strip mining there, or is it underground? Well, uh, yeah, it was strip mining. Open, okay. Open, yeah. Uh, I got a job there, you know. And uh, I worked there for, uh, for four, five years. I was in a supply, a supply house, mm -hmm. charge of the supply house. And uh, after that, uh, I got a job as a purchasing agent, and I stayed there for five years. And then they, the, the, the company sold the mine, mm -hmm. but the company that sold the mine I worked for, they kept me on and sent me down to the deep mines, mm -hmm. you know, down in uh, different locations. Mm -hmm. So I, and I was down there for, I was there for. When they sent me to the deep mines, they put me in charge of a supply house, mm -hmm. and I was there for 12 years. Okay. And I'm now retired in uh, 1985. All right. Let's see. And when did you get married? Whew. Wait, no. Wait. Let me think. <laughs> I got married May 13th, 1950. Did he get that right? Right. Okay, good. Boy, oh boy, a little better. Better. Okay, seal of approval there. All right. Okay. Um, 
And to think back on it, I guess, um, to the time you spent in the service, um, how do you think that affected you or what did you learn from that? Well, I think it made me realize a lot, you know, what life's all about. It can be short, mm -hmm. but overall it was, a, it, was a, it was really a great experience, really. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, it makes for a good story. So thank you very much for taking the time to share it today. Oh, boy. I've survived. Yep. All right.